Hello, everyone. How's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Planet Zoo, shall we? Continuing our complete beginner's guide. And I think it's time for us, you know, to expand our zoo in the sense of perhaps getting a new animal that is a little bit more difficult to maintain so we can walk through that and explain it as part of our guide. Let's first of all say hello and to claim our conservation points. And you can see we have about a thousand points right here, which is pretty good. Uh, I don't log in all the time, so I'm going to be behind you. But if you log in every day, you're going to rack these up pretty quickly. And then once you can start selling animals into the wild, you will indeed begin acquiring them more and more. Now, notice these people have umbrellas. Uh, guests get umbrellas at the information center so make sure you have an information center built so that the people can visit it and acquire an umbrella uh, to protect them from the rain so you'll see uh, let's see what do we have right here this is the information center and this is where they're getting that stuff now melissa nobles you'll see remember we were training the staff last time she's two out of five stars and people are upset because it's kind of queuing up so another thing that we might want to do, and you can see, look, this is also queuing up a bit here, is say, you know what, we're getting so many guests, maybe we need another little area for guests to acquire these services, food, drink, bathrooms, etc., as our zoo is expanding. So you could just click on somebody and say, look at this, maybe I'll come back to Gulpy Soda when it's less busy, I'm thirsty. So they're upset because there's too long of a line. Now, here's a really quick fix that you can do. You can go to facilities, and you can go to guest facilities, and you can go to drink stalls, and instead of buying a drink stall, you can install a gulpy vending machine. Now, vending machines are great because you don't have to have an employee work them, which is really cool, and I'm going to put it right there. However, a negative about vending machines is that they, they seem to break all the time, at least in my experience. Now, we can also build uh, a vending machine over here that serves hamburgers. Don't ask. Now, you want to put vending machines. Look, these people are going to use it right away at a place that's kind of like out of the way so that the queues don't block up. And there's nothing over here for people to look at so that I'm happy with these two vending machines right here. Now, here's what you want to do with vending machines to make sure that they run smoothly. I'm going to zoom in on these. I'm going to select this one, and we're going to say, look at this. Somebody else already was like, it's too busy. i got to go someplace else. Um, we're going to go to maintenance, and I'm going to say that I want them to visit every month. Now, I know that's ridiculous, but that's what I want. And I also want someone to visit this every month, and you'll notice uh, here we go, zoo alert, research complete, and boa constrictor is going well. But here's another thing you need to think about with uh, a vending machine is that it needs to go into a work zone. So we need to go to work zones, zoo, staff, work zones. And we need to say, all right, well, let's just edit the work zone for the entry. And remember, everything in green is part of that work zone. So I'm just going to kind of click on these two and add them in here. So the mechanic that we have here will go there and fix them. Now, if you leave them out of a work zone, as long as you have mechanics that just aren't assigned to a work zone, that just work your zoo overall, it won't be a problem. They'll do that for you. But you're going to need to make sure that you have enough of those on hand. Now, this is getting really, really popular, and it's already made 28 bucks for us. So I think that I'm going to actually just go ahead and duplicate it and put another one in. And where do I want to put it? I'm going to put it in a place that I don't think will block anyone. And But it, it also needs to be a place that like, people are kind of walking by. So I feel like that's an okay location there. And so is that. Now, with both of these, you're going to need to say, all right, I need to select this, and we need to go to maintenance, and we need to make sure that it's every month. Even though I'm duplicating it, it, does, it only duplicates the item in this case. It's not duplicating 
the maintenance routine. This is very demanding to have them come to it every month, by the way. But it's worth it because I swear these things break out. They just break down so much. All right. We finished some research on barriers, which is awesome. And uh, we now need to install someone else to do more research. And this is for mechanics. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start researching power so we can get some other power options. But all of this stuff is awesome. Because you can unlock new cosmetics for drink shops, food shops. Transport's sweet. Once your zoo gets bigger, you want trains and things. And looks like we finished some research here. Continue. Great. Our animal research is going great. We're researching um, bordetellosis and botulism here. So this is looking really good. All right. Now... I do want to then, the last thing I need to do is go back here into staff and go to work zones and edit uh, this work zone. And I'm going to throw in this building and this building. And then I'm also going to go, that's fine there, close this up and then edit this work zone. And I'm going to add that. And I'm also going to add that. Very good. And guess you can add that. Doesn't really matter. Great. Okay. Now these vending machines should be well maintained. And you could kind of keep track. You definitely want to trash can buy these things of how much people are buying it. And this is like actually running in the negative. Let's see how the inspector viewed this. Everything is great except education. And education will come as we do more research. That's just the reality of it. We need better people, better staff, better research. Speaking of staff, let's keep it going. Look at these lines. I want to build another habitat, but I feel like we're going to do a two for one here. We're going to want to build more guest facilities and build more habitat space. Now, I'm going to see our staff right here. And how's everybody doing? This keeper is tired. Everything else is going good here. I like to just look up and down. And you see the vendors, they still have high workload. So I think it's worth it to hire some more vendors to help so that people could take breaks. And how many mechanics do I have? I only have three. Uh, staff are having to queue to use this facility over here for um, this is a research center. Okay, so we need to build more research centers. And I was already talking about that. All right. And I'm going to pause the game for a moment. We have a VIP guest at the zoo. We're going to say hello. We finished this research. We're going to be like, sweet. Uh, that's going along nicely. And what's important here, I'm going to push H to bring up the heat map. We need to look at negative impact. If I did want to build, you know, more guest, uh, more staff facilities here, I could just keep expanding this. But I think it's time for us to get a little bit more advanced with building in this game and taking advantage of height. Okay, so something we can actually do is duplicate this research facility, and I'm just going to build it right on top of the other research facility. Now I'm going to, I am editing the group, which I'm okay with. That's fine for now. I'm going to exit, and I'm going to push escape again. And now there's a facility up here, but of course no one can get here. So what we need to do is go to paths and I'm going to warn you up front. I'm going to go for staff paths. This is wonky, but once you figure this out, it will make you very happy. And the reason is, at least in my experience, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually push escape for now. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to just uh, in advance build another one so that the path will connect more easily. And I'm also going to duplicate this research for uh, it's a mechanics workshop right here. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to push escape. This will save you so much trouble in the long run if you can learn to do this, which is to stack up your staff facilities. Because if I push H for the heat map again, the negative impact on guest, uh, guests does not matter if you're going upward, right? And so it doesn't affect left to right. 
and you could just use the area that you've already budgeted for negative impact on guests and build vertically. It's, like I said, a little bit strange to get the paths working, but once you do, you will be super pumped about it. So I'm gonna just do this, and I can connect these, and I'm gonna build a path right here, and you'll see like, it doesn't want me to connect this. So why is that? And it just gets a little annoying, but you will get this to work. So I'm actually not gonna connect it. I'm going to um, just right click all these to demolish it. And instead, what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna take the staff path and I build it back here. I'm gonna select a path, but instead of building it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and then I'm going to actually hold the left mouse button and I'm gonna just drag upwards slowly. You'll see that by the cursor, there's a little up and down and you can build this either at a slight angle for a ramp or to go fully on with stairs. And I'm gonna build steps and I'm going to build a landing. I'm gonna flatten this part out. I'm going to wrap this around and like this, but I'm going to say, hey, can you go up please? And no, sort of, sort of, that's kind of what I want. No, let's just build the steps here, that's fine, yep. And then we're gonna flatten this and I'm gonna build this back around and here we go. And now I kind of have a pathway that is moving around here, but it doesn't fit yet. It's saying it's obstructed, I'm gonna push and I'm going to then figure out how can I get this to connect? How can I do this, right? Well, in this case, I think actually maybe this staircase is getting in the way. So I'm gonna get rid of this and this is still obstructed. It's not the light post, I don't think, that's in the way here. Even with this, it's this staircase that's getting in its way. Watch this, I'll show you. I'm gonna right click and break this and yep. So instead, sometimes what you have to do is build backward. All right, let me build this like this and then say, hey, can you connect? There we go, it can. And then let's just build the staircase over here and see, no, we need to, we need to do this a little bit differently. Here we go. This is going to be wonky. Like I said, it is, is a wonky process. That is, whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. So I'm just right clicking and I'm going to just even this out and I'm going to try to pull this back over here. This is actually pretty good. Yes, just like this. Down, down, down. And then once we get on the ground, we can wrap this around and eventually I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to pull this back. Oh, well, no, I don't want to do that. And connect it like so. Okay, so a little bit wild that they have to go this far out of their way, but sometimes you need to do this to, to make this happen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm actually going to right-click on this, and I'm going to make a giant pathway right here that's like super, super wide like this and see if this will work. There we go. And I'm going to just build it one more like that. And I'm going to stop building, push escape. And then I'm going to select the path tool again. And I'm going to try just, you know, using a regular size path to connect the doorway here. See if I can get this happening. And it's not happy about this. So again, like I said, this requires a lot of finesse to make it happen. So I'm just going to right click all of this and say, well, we tried. And we'll build, I'm gonna build each individual. No, um, just build one, thank you. And that's okay. Uh, go ahead, get rid of that and build another path like this, there. And then try to connect, there we go, it's connected now. And, oh, oh, it was almost there. There you go. And can we do it again? Almost, almost. Ah, it doesn't like that it wraps like that.
All right, so what I'm going to try to do is see if I can get to this doorway. I can't. And this is sad, but we're almost there. Got there. There's cleaner ways to do this. I tell you what, I am not great at building paths in Planet Zoo, but this worked. So you just have to play with it. And now what we have are another two vet research and a mechanics workshop that's upstairs. So I'm gonna push escape, get out of this wildness. And I'm going to click on this and be like, yep, this is great. And uh, it's not assigned to a work zone. So we want to give it a work zone, right? So how do we give it a work zone? Right now, these are duplicates of the facility that's downstairs. So somebody else is already using this, okay? Um, well, this is, no, never mind. These are all the different vets that they're researching in the other places. But what we want to do is add this to a work zone that exists so you know we could create a new work zone but i don't want to do that instead what i want to do is just go back to zoo and staff and work zone and say all right um i'm going to delete that work zone that i just made and we're going to go back into um let's see here entry center this is fine and we're gonna just add these. Remember, these staff buildings belong to both. And then we're gonna close it. And then in um, entry zone, I'm gonna add these just like that. Now, I'm gonna unpause the game and you're gonna see that this staff member should eventually realize I can go someplace else to research, I think. Uh, let's see. It's in its work zones. And yes, they did. Here they come. Here, are, here comes somebody. This is the mechanic, actually. All right, cool. Bow constrictor. Speaking of mechanics... You see how um, I'm building so much stuff with vending machines and the like? I think it's time to hire some more people. So I'm going to go to zoo, and I'm going to go to staff, and I'm going to get myself uh, another mechanic, just drop them in, and I'm going to go back, and we are going to hire uh, two more vendors just to try to help ease the pain. Great. Vet research done. Okay, good. And let's see. Looks like we finished Boa Constrictor, Aardvark, and we can start getting some other potential diseases done. So I'm just going to kind of do this and do this. All right. Now look at that. Hopefully our staff that we've hired uh, can figure some things out and I can go now into mechanic research and I have this extra mechanic and I'm doing power uh, but you know what I'd like to do is start making some things look a little bit better in our zoo so I'm going to go into food shops and just have that happen alright now where do I want another habitat hmm I feel like this is a great space right here. So what kind of animals do we want? Let's go to Animal Market. Uh, ooh, vet research complete. Great. Yeah, let's finish this up. All right, good. And looks like the tortoises are about to have offspring. Let's go check this out. This will be fun. Look at all the people. They love this. They love looking at the turtles. We just put them in. And we're about to have a baby turtle appear. Magically. Let's be here for this. It's one of the key moments of any zoo. The time when the baby turtle appears. Let's see. Is it there yet? We're waiting. Oh, mama's laying down. There it is baby 
turtle. Oh my gosh, we had two baby turtles. So this is super exciting, but here's what you have to do immediately. We're going to push escape. There's three baby turtles. What is happening? Okay, so I'm going to push escape, and we did get a challenge uh, for increasing our rating. And staff are having a queue to use the facility. Which facility? Workshops? They should not. There should be enough workshops for them. Oh, no, there aren't. Well, guess what? I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm actually going to put it over here. Now, I'm going to leave the group because it's putting it in a weird place. But here's what you can do. Check this out. If you leave the group and leave the grid, you could stack. Once you put a building like on top, it automatically kind of goes up on top. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate this. And this makes your life a lot easier. Sometimes, and this is just me remembering and trying to explain as I go, it's easier to connect to an existing path that you've raised up if you build the building and put the door facing the path and it will automatically create this for you. So I'm going to put, build this right here like that. Um, well, I thought I was. Why didn't you build it? Um, exit? What was that? Oh, it really wants me to put it in a group. No, 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 I don't want to do that. Um, oh, select group six to add it to. No, I don't want to add it to a group. I guess if I stack it up, it really, really wants me to be in the group. Uh, which, okay, fine, but can I put this someplace else? I could put it there. All right, whatever. It's there now. And now we have another workshop, and I'm going to leave. And that's correct. All right, good. So either way, yes, build it after and just hope that it will automatically connect the path like we did. And we did this. Vet research complete. Good. That's great. And now I'm going to go back. And we are going to go to zoo. We're going to go to staff. And we're going to go to work zones. And we're just going to edit the work zones to include this, both of them. We want both to have that so that all the mechanics can use it. Great. Okay, let's go back to animal trading. Oh, wait. No, no, never mind. I was going to talk about that, but we have to go to this habitat right here. And we need to look at it. And why do we need to look at it? We need to look at the animals and how happy they are because uh, we have too many animals potentially in here. So this is a time when we need to start thinking about what do we want to do with all the animals that we have. There's not enough food in this habitat. All right, so that's something that troubles me already. But let's go to animals, and can we get grade 3 quality food? We can. All right, get them the good food. They should come and feed them. I put pallets. Um, oh, no suitable species. This isn't what they want. Interesting. Um, okay. Well, then maybe we need to build a different kind of food for them. So let's go to habitat. And let's go to food and water. And I'm going to go for uh, filters, species, these. And, okay, they want this food trough. Okay, so I built the wrong thing for them. So let's put some in for them. That's the right food trough. So you have to make sure that your food trough, it's not just one size fits all. Obstructed, it says. Here. There. All right, there we go. And then you can go ahead and... I'm just going to delete these. You get your money back. Get rid of it. There. All right. So we have to keep our eye on this. Because we don't want it to get too crowded with babies. This is a huge part of Planet Zoo, is managing the babies. Especially in the smaller enclosures... Man, this barrier looks terrible. All right, we got to hire more mechanics. That's just all there is to it. Zoo, staff, mechanic, go. And we got some more research done. Man, most of these barriers look terrible. All right. 
We got the VIP guests. Let's say hello. Get those conservation points. All right, animal trading, um, animal storage, no rewards, no animal market. Uh, I don't know why, but the, here comes the animal market. It wasn't loading for me. There we go. All right, so we're going to reset all filters. And I want to look for animals that are attractive, but are trading for perhaps conservation credits. So let's just say I only want conservation credits, and the maximum has to be like, you know, there you go. Okay, confirm. And let's see what we can get. So they do have actually some male buffaloes. That's kind of cool. There's these camels. Very good, very good. Oh, I love tigers. These are cheap tigers. They're old. 18.6 years, huh? Um, but, no, I kind of want something. Oh, there's bonobos. Cheetahs. That's awesome. I'm looking for an animal that wants water. Ostriches out the wazoo. Uh, there's some warthogs. Okay. And these are like albino warthogs. Let me check this animal really fast. Uh, just to see what it is in the Zoopedia. Do they have a requirement for uh, water? They don't. They don't care. Okay. No problem. Uh, let's see. Animal alerts. They're stressed. Okay. So, it's worth wondering. Can I, at this moment, go habitat? Um, oh, no. Barriers. What do I have? Do I have... Uh, I have glass. I haven't finished the research to get the one-way glass yet. So, we have to keep going for that, unfortunately. Um, and vet research is complete. They finished mechanics. On barriers, they're getting there then. And I don't want to put uh, her on research because I want somebody to actually fix the barriers and stuff. And this is research that's been done on botulism, okay. And why don't you come over here and I guess, sure. All right. Let's go back to... Uh, let's see. We've got regular glass. No, not yet. All right. We'll have to wait. Let me look at the market. All right. And let's see. Well, there's a big elephant. Elephants are great. This this elephant right here is old, um, you know, and isn't as great as it could be. So what we're going to do is just kind of skip through. We're trying to find something that's a little bit more. We've got the pangolins involved for maintenance case. Now we're going to get past the common ostrich and the other common stuff. There's our turtles. There's a bear. I want a male and a female. Okay. Well, there are gharials. They're really cool. They're like big crocodiles. Otters are awesome. Yeah, let's get some otters. These are not expensive. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one. Adopt. And a female. Uh... Yeah, that's fine. Great. So now we have a male and a female otter. So we're going to go to our animal trading, and we're going to go to animal storage. Looks like we finished some research. Hmm. The animal storage is waiting to load. Okay, here we go. Good, good, good. Um, here, go back here. Go to animal trading and go to the storage. And let's check out these otters. What do they need? 
Here we go. Uh, no, just my storage. That's all. All right, here we go. And we're going to check them out. This is uh, a giant otter. And I'm actually just going to go into the uh, Zoopedia here and look for giant otter. All right. So they have a water requirement. It needs to be deep water. They need a big area and a grade two barrier. So let's go for it. I'm going to have two adults at the moment. Okay, so they need 4,000 square feet of land. Then they need about 2,000 square feet of water, and it has to be this deep. So this is a totally new thing for us. And we're going to go ahead and start working on a habitat that has this. I'm going to go into barriers. And are there any cool new barriers that I want to build? Well, I'm going to use brick because it's my favorite. And we're going to just start sketching this out. We'll change the barrier, of course, uh, as we go. But let's see if we can get this in here connected to what we have. I don't want it to be too large. But it'd be great if people on this pathway could comfortably see these animals. We'll have to move, you know, these benches and other things, but that's okay. And then we're going to go to uh, habitat, no nope, barrier. We need to put a keep uh, habitat gate on here. And uh, this is fine over here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and look at this. And here it is. How big is this thing? Terrain. This is 12,000 feet. So it's definitely big enough. And now we can fit our water in here and it should be okay. So here's how you put water in a habitat. You go ahead and you go to the terrain tool. And we're going to do sculpting. And we're going to push down the ground to create a pond or like a, you know, a natural place for them to to swim and if you build the barriers first and you're holding down the mouse button you'll notice that you can't lower the ground by the barrier because of the wall so it creates some weird situations and the sculpting tool itself just takes a moment to get used to but this is really deep water that we have right here so like this already is deep enough but here's the trick with water, and I'll show you. I'm just digging this out as much as I can. We're going to sculpt this away and just create a place for them to swim over here. And this is when the experimentation has to happen. Okay, so now look at your land area. You can still see that we have 11,000 square feet, so this is plenty large. We actually will probably make this smaller in a moment but now it's time to see about water so to add water you click this drop down here and then you just click i like calm water and then what you want to do is you want to just select the hole that you've pushed and wherever it says valid that means you can put the water and i'm going to put it here and it's going to make a little water area and this water area you can see it is okay 44,000 or 4,400 square feet. So it's way bigger than what they actually need. So that's good. However, I'm going to uh, remove the water. So I'm going to click this remove water and get rid of it. Because if you want your animals to be able to actually get into the water, you have to, this killed me at first when I was playing because I could never figure this out. Yes, you want the water to be deep because they want it to be deep. But it also, all right, and I'm going to uh, push this water down just to make sure that the ground is as deep as they want it to go. It also must be a gradual decline on the edge of the water for them to be able to get in and out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go here and I'm going to use the smoothing tool. And I'm just going to start gradually smoothing this edge 
to create a transition that is more reasonable for the animal to get in here. All right. And hopefully we can do that for them. Now, uh, oh, the inspector has already come. Uh, same report as before. All right. Fair enough. And the animals have low welfare because they're being spotted. And we've researched some vet stuff. That's great. Okay, fantastic. Uh, can We cannot research the animals that we want yet. I'm going to leave research empty because we don't have the animals in here. So I'm going to go back to the pause for a moment. And I'm going to go back to the terrain tool and I am going to put in the water. And I'm going to just say, all right, we want the water in here. Calm water up to here is fantastic. And there we go. So this is nice and large. Now here's what you want to do. I'm going to unpause it for a bit. I'm just going to let some time pass. And I'm going to push escape. Now average water depth is not changing, but that's okay. And here's what you want to do. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to put my heat map. And I'm going to go to the water. And from the water, you can see there's water right here. But what you want to do is you want to see, um, is this water, uh, the temperature, we might have to regulate it for them. We'll have to look at the, the animals and if they want the water to be warm. But what, what you want to do when you're in the habitat is make sure that this water is accessible for them. All right. So you go to habitat and what you want is traversable area. Okay. So you need to make sure that this area is all traversable for them. And we have no animals in here, so maybe we're waiting for that before that changes. So then it's time then to say, all right, uh, bring out the animals. We gotta wait for the animal storage to load here. And once this loads, I'll bring the animals in. Now, I will probably make this habitat a little bit smaller for the otters uh, because it's too large and I want the guests to be able to get a good view. All right, let's see. Animal market waiting on this to load. Kind of. If this is not wanting to load, all right, quarantine, surgery, animal trade center, open animal storage. Hmm. All right. The game is unhappy with me right now. I don't know if it's just there. Sometimes their servers are taking like way too long to load the animals. And so you get these kinds of like weird timeouts. They might be doing maintenance right now. I'm not sure. But I do want animals. Here, go to exhibit trading. Um, and just go back to my zoo. And click on that. Close this. Click on this. See if we can open anything else. All right, we got a reward for breeding a new animal. Now, everything is... There we go. It's all slow. Okay, food shops have been researched. Great. Close that up. And let's go here. And let me just see if I can actually uh, open animal storage and get to it. All right, I'm going to open this. I'm not going to click on anything else. I'm just going to leave this here and let it try to populate so that we can move our otters in. Here we go. And we're going to send them to the zoo... And we're going to send them right here. And before they even get there, I'm going to go to barriers. And I'm going to... There we go. Open this. Click on this. I'm just going to add a barrier that's like... That. Good. I'm going to push escape. And I'm going to start getting rid of these barriers over here. Just take them out of the equation and see how big is my habitat now. It is got enough land. It's got enough water. Average water depth of 20 feet. 
Hopefully that's good. All right, and we're going to immediately pause the game. Why are we doing that? Because I don't know if these otters like grass. So let's click on the otter and let's see how they feel. Let's go on this. Let's claim the rewards right there. Great. And then you are saying what? Well, while we're doing this, let's go to research, vet research. Let's put somebody on the giant otter, like one of our best people. All right, they're on that. And then let's go ahead and start getting some other stuff researched. Okay, so foot and mouth. Thank you. Hepatitis. Go. Get it taken care of. All right, so let's see. What do you want for terrain? You do not like. You're happy. You're super happy with the water, the depth, and the area. To be honest, the, the land area is actually uh, smaller than what they'd like, but it's still okay. So I'm going to keep everything as is for now. We could make... It's much easier to make the land area bigger than uh, to make the water again. So they like the water. Now, what they don't like is this long grass. They, in fact, want sand. So we're going to go into the terrain tool again, and we're going to go to painting, and let's give them some sand. Like that. Okay, and they like this. They do want some short grass, though. That's too much sand. So let's give them some soil. Like that. And then let's give them that short grass. Now everything is good. They even want some long grass. Okay, great. Now, we've painted this well enough that they're happy with all of that. They do want hard shelter. So, it's time to go ahead and go to the habitat. And we're going to change this species to the giant otter. Like that. And we'll go to, you know, beds and shelters. Now, there's some cool aquatic Oh, boy. Oh, you could build a whole habitat if you use that stamp. That's kind of cool. Uh, this is a jetty habitat. Like, if you want to build a dock for them. I don't think this counts as a hard shelter for them, though. So, I'm going to instead... Uh, I mean... This is neat, but it's enormous. I don't know. Do they want that? Uh, we could try it. Sure. And then we'll put a big shelter. Well, let's put a shelter like there. And then unpause it. And they love that. Oh, it's recalculating. Oh, look at this. You know what's really awesome about this dock that we just built? This gave them more navigable land area, but it didn't take away any water area so that's ingenious i love this okay great so now in this point everything here is good they just need enrichment right so she wants some enrichment stuff do we have anything oh yeah we do rubber duck uh boom gift box boom block of ice boom on pause and what kind of enrichment are you looking for you want more food enrichment all right we'll give you an underwater um fish feeder and then we'll give you a a beach ball and a ball over here and a pumpkin right there exit and unpause boom just about everything's happy social too few adults once maybe the other animal comes in hopefully they'll be happier when there's another one in here and then now they're great so we just did everything right there they're thrilled with this look at this and this is otters swimming i mean look how awesome these otters are now you might otters might be a dlc i cannot remember so they might be part of the aquatic pack i don't know um if you don't have them then just follow these exact guidelines for building a water habitat where you push down the terrain 
and you make a smooth entry, make it deep enough, and then just make sure you have enough land terrain and enough water terrain. Fill it up with water and see if they're happy with everything else. And these animals are, like, thriving. So this is beautiful. I'm going to pause it. It's time to start putting in some path. So we're going to go ahead and just extend the path around. Because not staff path, regular path. Yeah. And we're going to make it like a big path. I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to push plus and just make this enormous. Well, maybe not that big. There you go. Uh-huh. We're going to wrap this around and connect it there. Now, we have this all the way connected. Now, it is important to pay attention to these animals in the sense of you got to check out their environment. They don't like these plants that we have. So we need to give them plant and tree coverage. We'll do that. But you also have to check the animal in terms of, let's see if I can find it here you got to make sure that their temperature is legit. They might have a specific requirement about how hot or cold it is. And so you certainly want to keep an eye on that. Right now it seems okay. But if they have an issue, then we might need to heat or cool the water, depending. I think they're all right. All right, so what we're going to do is going to go to barrier and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just start putting in some glass. Now, I'd like to just do, here we go. I'm going to edit the barrier. We're just going to throw in some windows like that. And what if I did that all windows all the time <laughs> sweet so this will certainly work the otters don't care i don't believe they're shy and the guests are going to get a great view of them all around they can see them on the dock they can see them in the water and we might do some more tricks with these otters but as i unpause it you'll notice that uh the guests are cool with this uh, are the the otters are cool with this, and it's a really, really nice habitat. We could start having some babies, and they will be even more happy. But I want to show you some maybe some more things we can do, building uh, a skyway for the guests to get a better view. We need to put in some more food and drink and bathroom areas now that the zoo is getting bigger. But we're doing so well. I mean, we keep making money. Those animals didn't cost that much in terms of conservation points. And already people are over here. And, well, they're ra it's raining. But for the most part, let's see if they have any good opinions. There's not a lot to do. Well, I don't like that opinion. But you came here to see animals. I've seen bigger zoos. Well, true. We're just starting out. Boy, that's tough crowd here. But look at that. Look at all the guests that we're getting. We're doing wonderfully, and I hope you're still finding this series to be useful and fun. We've tackled building on two floors by expanding our guest or our staff facilities upward, and we've tackled building with water. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Take care. <laughs>